Morning, everyone. I invite you to unmute as you respond to this, uh, this being the first Sunday after Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> All right. Now I turn it over to Violet to uh, welcome us into this space. I'm going to mute all, so Violet, I mute. <clears throat> Sorry, Violet, you need to unmute. Sorry, I'm using a new machine. I mean, it's not a new machine, but it's new to this process. So everything's kind of confused. Anyway, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's wonderful to have you here today, this first Sunday after Easter. I am going to read our mission and vision statement so that we all can center on who and what we are. Our mission statement, love God, love people, love creation, live like Jesus. A vision statement. We are a welcoming Christian community committed to Christ's mission to love and serve our neighbor and eager to learn about Jesus' teachings. We are inclusive of and an advocate for people of all ages, ethnic backgrounds, gender identities, sexual orientation, and gender expressions. We join with all to combat racism. We believe all are created equal, and we strive for gender and racial equality. We live according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. We seek to learn more about God, God's will for us individually and collectively, and our role as stewards of his creation. We encourage our members and community partners to apply all their gifts and passions to help the poor, the vulnerable, the marginalized, and God's creation. We serve in love as our Christian response. We believe all are called and equipped by God for a variety of missions. We serve as a community and we serve as individuals. Our goal is to accompany those in need, whether living near or far. Now we're going to do community news to find out what's up this week. We seem to have a lot of activities going on lately. First on Friday, May the 5th at one o'clock, at Cindy Kinney's house, which the address is in the um, Faith News Bulletin on, from Thursday, and I'm sure it'll be in next Thursday as well. Uh, they're going to have a gathering of people who want to put together the baby care kits that will be delivered the, the following week, I believe, um, at an in gathering at St. Andrews, I think. At any rate, uh, they're looking for help. They're also still looking for monetary gifts because several items needed to be purchased and we need money to be able to um, pay for those. Also, I want to remind you that uh, Cindy Kinney and Sherry, Sherry Wade have been doing this the last couple of years and they're going to retire as leads of the program. This follows Shirley as she um, also retired a couple of years ago as a lead. They will be around to help wherever needed and give um, advice or, or suggestions as needed, but they no longer want to be the lead. So we are looking for uh, a couple of people maybe who can co-lead the, the, uh, the effort. And, and we, need, we think that it might be a good idea if, if you think you're willing to do that, to show up on that May the 5th date and watch that the end of process and then they can fill you in on the beginning baby kit used to be just basically a spring effort but lately it's become more of a all-year effort where people are gathering things and making things for the kits uh, basically all year 
gathering monies to be able to purchase what's needed. So keep that in mind. If it sounds like something you might be interested in, contact Sydney Kinney or Sherry Wade, and they can fill you in on the particulars. St. Matthews, remember that we have the second and fourth Tuesdays from 4.45 to 6.15 p.m. where we staff the um, food pantry that's located there. If you have any questions about it at all, please contact Michael Gross. I know several of our members um, have signed shifts that they are there and they'd be more than help you to give whatever training you might've missed out on. And uh, as I said, contact Michael if you have any questions. Just uh, sign up on the link um, if you are interested. The link is always in Faith News now. Okay. We are still looking for council members. We definitely are losing two council members this month or this spring. So we need to replace those two. Plus last year, we had an extra opening that we didn't fill. So in effect, there's three or four that we're looking for. One of the people needs to um, volunteer to be a trip, the council secretary and be able to prepare the minutes and whatever else is needed for the, for the council's um, his, history. If you have any interest at all or think you might be interested, please contact Susie pastor or any of the council members and we can tell you what's involved it isn't a lot of time we meet once a month by zoom so you don't even have to leave your house uh, there are at times um, email discussions and conversations and at times different people are working on different projects so there can be a little extra work but it's nothing onerous and uh, if it, we truly need people to be willing to step up and offer their services because it, on our bylaws, we're required to have a certain number of council members. And I'm not sure what would happen if we didn't. So please think about it, be, look deep in your heart, pray. Um, and if you're, if you're willing, then please step forward. Thank you, Violet. I'm just gonna add one thing about the secretary position. Uh, if, if doing the minutes sounds daunting, please know that we have our um, staff administrator who attends the meetings and, and does take the initial minutes. So you don't have to be uh, recording minutes uh, while the meeting is going on, but you get to kind of look them over and, and make sure they're ready for uh, folks to see. So I uh, just didn't want you to be uh, daunted by that uh, possibility. Um, uh, Violet's been a great secretary. Uh, uh, while she's been on council and so encourage you to consider that as well. Thank you. And we have the RIC team leader here today. So I'm going to let her talk about tonight. Oh, and Thursday. Yeah, I think so. We do have our meeting Thursday at 630 um, for the RIC team meeting. But tonight, if probably the next slide. Yep. So tonight we have our second uh, ever Rainbow Faith Alliance event. We have a really, um, I think she's gonna, I don't know her, but uh, sounds like a very interesting storyteller, Dara Willis, who has an individual um, or family member, I should say, that's um, a lesbian and is also a surgical nurse um, that helps with people who are transitioning. So I, just, I think her story will be interesting. Um, it's a great place for um, you know, listening and for conversation and also for education, just really learning how to be a better ally to the LGBTQ community. Um, so anyway, I hope you can come. I think they're they're fun and interesting and uh, we're always looking for speakers as well. So if you have a an interest in sharing your story, that would also be really welcomed. So anyway, I hope, hope to see you tonight at uh, Shepherd of the Valley at 7 p.m. Sally, I also understand that uh, you might be looking for folks to bring some snacks to share for uh, refreshments tonight. So if there are folks who are planning to attend uh, who want to bring some cookies or um, something. Cheese and crackers or, yeah, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. And it's time for our April birthday announcement. We have two people today um, or this month, Steve and Bev Hada. So happy birthday to both of them. Steve, I know, just got back from his big number birthday trip. So I'm sure he's still remembering all of that. So happy birthday to you guys.
All right. Um, our worship continues now with uh, a, an opportunity to share the peace with one another and check in with your neighbor. Uh, so I am going to create some breakout rooms and invite you all to um, spend about five minutes just checking in and sharing the peace. And uh, those who want to stay in the sanctuary, which um, I'm... Uh, <laughs> It's a whole other story, but I'm operating in a different location with just one computer. So this is not called the sanctuary, but if you just stay in this room, uh, there will be some opportunity for uh, music and images uh, if you prefer just to stay there. Um, and uh, so I say to you all, the peace of Christ is with you. And also with you. All right, I invite Violet to unmute and lead us in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. <clears throat> Meet us here today, Lord Jesus Christ, and reveal yourself to us. We have come to worship, trusting your province, even as we hesitate to act on it. As we offer ourselves today, bless us with faith that serves, not only speaks. God with us, teach us once again that we may hear your word and walk in your way, inviting others to do the same. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with our gathering song. I invite you to stay muted and sing along with our worship team, I Will Rise. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has the grave is overwhelmed, the victory is won, he is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name, no more sorrow.
Our worship continues with the hearing of God's word in scripture. Today I read from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter. This is our um, last reading uh, this year in the Gospel of Matthew, the last verses in that Gospel, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is God's good news for us today. Amen. So I'm going to send you into breakout rooms uh, to talk about this text a little bit. And I've got two questions I'm going to drop here in the chat or two. Yeah, two questions to guide your conversation. Going to be the same groups that you had uh, for the first uh, breakout room session. And so the questions are, uh, what does making disciples of all nations look like in today's world? And what are the things Jesus wants us to teach people to obey? Um, those are the sort of the prompts. Um, no right or wrong answers, just good uh, opportunity for discussion. And I'm going to create the breakout rooms again. Again, if you prefer to stay in the sanctuary and, and meditate on these questions, that's great. Um, there will be uh, music and images again. And so I am opening the room. So we'll see you back here in about five minutes. Welcome back, everyone. I'm curious if you had a chance to uh, talk about either of those questions and if uh, and what came up in your conversations. Uh, what does making disciples of all nations look like in today's world? And what are the things Jesus wants us to teach people to obey? We thought about all nations rather uh, looked at it from a different communities. Right, because it's not necessarily um, divvied up by governmental boundaries as it is sort of um, subdivided into uh, self-selected communities. Wow. Okay. And what does it mean to make disciples of those folks in those communities? Um, it would entail uh, accepting them and hearing them and uh, working out relationships with them and uh, guiding, right? Uh, those sorts of things. Nice. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Others? Other thoughts? Theological education in North America has been way too focused on intellect. Teaching them to know is how we would rewrite those verses. Uh, a whole a bodies of you know, church history and languages and blah, 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 blah. But the fact that it says teaching them to obey says that this is about what kind of learning is it? It's experiential learning. It's knowledge for life and in life. Uh, and that's a different approach, uh, experiential learning, than uh, uh, learning just about uh, content and mastering facts and, and, uh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, how much of Jesus' teachings were about experiencing or doing loving committing acts of love 
Yeah, yeah. His teachings were, um, yeah, thank you, Michael. And, and thank you, Steve, absolutely. Um, any Anyone else? One of the last things that Jesus shared was when he said, love one another, even as I have loved you. And I think that's what he would have our world obey. That if we could simply love one another, care for each other, be there for each other, that the world would be a different place. And I think that's what he wants us to encourage people to do. Yeah. Beautifully said. Yeah. Any 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 last thoughts before we continue? When Jesus spoke to the disciples about to obey, for me personally, it just means to remain steadfast in our belief. That's putting it real plain and simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, belief in in um, Jesus. Um, uh, Divinity, his connection to God, his um, the example that he set to his teachings. Yeah, I love that. All, all of that together. Yeah. 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 yeah I uh, I love this last text, and I also um, it also can make me a little nervous because I have seen we are seeing and and we're learning more about the ways that this kind of a commandment can be um, misused. Um, I think about the ways that um, uh, folks decided to go about baptizing uh, folks and teaching them to follow Jesus um, as they ac accompanied uh, sailing ships to go and conquer and colonize uh, other lands and how the evangelism and the baptizing was synonymous with uh, colonizing and oppression and slavery and um, stealing of land and all kinds of horrible things. Um, and so I, I want us to look at this with fresh eyes and, and recognize it for what I believe it is, which is um, Jesus inviting his disciples, and remember, disciples is a word that means learners, like people who are um, uh, entering into a discipline with a with a, a teacher, a rabbi, and and so these disciples have have been are are still learning how to follow Jesus, how to how to love and care for their neighbor, and Jesus is now inviting them to invite others into that learning, into that learning, which is as Steve pointed out, is not, not just head learning, not just, a, you know, um, adopting uh, or, or agreeing to a series of facts or uh, assertions about God and who Jesus is, but actually about that experiential relational uh, work of, of loving our neighbor as ourselves. Um, and so, so, you know, what are the things that Jesus wants us to teach people to obey? Um, these are, uh, it should also be mentioned that that obeying uh, a, a series of commandments or a, a way of being in the world that is counter to what uh, was being um, was being uh, put out there, broadcast out to the people from the people in power, uh, the Roman authorities, the religious authorities. Um, this was up and against over and against that, like to say that there's a different way to be in the world that is not about power over. You know, we talk about uh, Jesus says, I've been given all authority. And, you know, these people have heard this language before. They've heard about authority coming from people uh, with weapons and uh, military might and the ability to kind of uh, crush any um, any disagreement, any um, anything that that um, that uh, goes against the rules of the empire, um, and that's where the authority came from. It came from strength and and might and violence and oppression, 
And so I think it's hard for it's hard for me to like envision authority in a different way that comes from a place of vulnerability, that comes from not a place of how much uh, violence and and death can we inflict, but how much life can be uh, nurtured uh, and and grown. And and Jesus comes to us from that place, that place of submitting to violent authority. Uh, vulnerability, death, but out of that life, resurrection, new life, an empty tomb, right? Uh, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's where this is coming from. And so we're called to uh, to not only follow that way, um, but also to invite others into that relationship. Um, I think it's interesting to note, uh, I just learned recently um, that the Greek or go, you know, go and make disciples um, is not like, okay, you're standing still now go now, like, like an active, like go. It's more of a passive, like, as you go on your way, as you go to work, as you go uh, to the store, as you walk about your neighborhood, live out these commandments, teach people, uh, invite people into this relationship. So it's really about integrating this way of following Jesus into our daily lives, into our everyday life. Um, it isn't about sending missionaries off to a foreign country necessarily. It also can just be about as you go about your daily life, this is how you evangelize. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story that's just really fresh for me this week um, that I think in a in a small way, maybe maybe a large way, um, illustrates this point. Um, I've come into uh, into proximity relationship with a group of folks that I did not know a week ago. Um, I'd never met them before, um, uh, and and when I say in proximity, they've been in my home. <laughs> uh, and and these are folks that I have no idea whether or not they can consider themselves followers of Jesus, whether they consider themselves Christians. But I can say that they have behaved in ways that have been like, go about your life and also show compassion, show love. And what I'm referring to is the folks who have come into my home. We had a plumbing mishap on Easter morning. Our house was flooded. Um, we are, I am broadcasting to you from the Larkspur Landing Hotel because we have been displaced from our home uh, while the floor is, it, while everything's being dried and, and eventually everything's going to have to be torn out, the floors and, and it wasn't that much water, but water is, uh, is that's a whole other story. Um, my point is, is that, um, you know, we got in touch with the folks we needed to get in touch with, the folks who come in and uh, put up the fans and um, tear up the floor and, and get into the walls and, and do everything they need to do to stop the damage from being any worse, get the place dried out. And, and can I just tell you that these people, um, so Ron and I, you might imagine, we're a little, we were a little overwhelmed. Uh, we were a little in shock uh, to kind of um, have like one day everything's normal and the next day like we can't live in our house and what do we do with our dogs and all the things and these people walked into our home uh, and they were polite and they listened and they um, they you know kept saying we're so sorry that we're having to impose ourselves in your home just um, emulated for me what I believe this Great Commission is is ultimately about, which is like as they go about their daily lives, they could have just walked into our home and said, "Hey, get out of our way. We got a job to do. We got to set up fans. We got to do this." But no, they they came into our home and recognized that like here's a couple of people who are sort of overwhelmed right now, and we're going to give them the information they need, but we're also going to give them time to process it. We're going to be kind to them. We're going to answer any questions they may, might have. Um, I have just been over and all uh, impressed by the people who've come into my life uh, in the last week that I did not know a week ago. Um, they have made this, this um, traumatic event, um, which let's be honest, in the grand scheme of things, of what's going on in our world, uh, this is small, right? This is small. 
we are blessed to have a home in which uh, water can cause damage, right? We are blessed to have insurance that can cover all of this. So I'm not, this is not like major trauma, but you know, in the moment, it's kind of hard to deal with. It's inconvenient. It's uncomfortable. It's, um, it's all those things. I, I just want to lift these folks up as an example that, that I have seen today. Uh, this week um, that really speak to today's message from Jesus, that Jesus is inviting his followers to spread out and invite other followers to, to be kind, to show compassion, to forgive, to reconcile, to not judge, to care for one another. Uh, I want to read to you um, uh, a part of a, a kind of a uh, it was a responsive poem, but I'm just going to read the whole thing as one piece uh, written by uh, a woman named Terry Peterson, a, uh, a pastor, a Presbyterian pastor in Scotland. She says this, Jesus calls us to come and meet him. However many or few we are at the moment, however ready or unready we feel, Jesus calls us to go out and live his way telling others that another life is possible, showing the world God's kingdom is here. Jesus promises to be with us always, present in our work and our worship, empowering us to pursue his purpose. Siblings in Christ, this is the message of today that um, death has been conquered by life, that uh, violence and oppression has been conquered by compassion and love and grace. And, um, and this is the message that we are called to follow, we are called to live, and we are, in, we are called to invite our neighbors to follow and live out with us. And that is truly good news. That speaks to new life in a world where too often the headlines are overcome by death and violence and oppression. Um, we are called to tell a better story uh, with not just our, um, our mouths and our brains, but with our hands and feet, with our bodies, with our hearts. Um, and, and the best news of all, Jesus says at the end of this, uh, remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We are not alone in this. Um, we have uh, Jesus the Christ, the crucified and risen one, who walks with us into this new future, filled with hope, filled with faith, filled with love. Amen. Our worship continues now with the prayers of God's people. I invite Violet to unmute and to um, lead us in the prayers. Let us pray. You are always with us, risen Christ, and we are grateful for your presence walking alongside us as we seek your way, as we celebrate your resurrection. We give thanks for your life among us and within us and pray it would be revealed through us. We bless you for power made perfect in weakness, for authority rooted in self-giving, for love that conquers death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, our prayers. We offer our praise and our prayers too, for sometimes the state of the world makes it difficult to see your kingdom. And so we ask for your healing presence to be tangible among us, bringing wholeness and comfort and hope to those who are suffering. We ask for your peaceful presence to be real bringing an end to violence and hate. We ask for your gracious presence to overcome our divisions, teaching us to treat one another with dignity and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We ask for your joyful presence to be visible, 
shining light into the shadows. We ask for your challenging presence to be recognized, calling for justice and insisting on leaving the ways of empire behind. We ask for your hopeful presence to fill every place, empowering those who have been oppressed. And we ask for your church to be so filled with your promised presence that we become a beacon of your blessing drawing all people to you as we go about your business, fulfilling your purpose, loving, serving, and caring for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Now is the time for all of you to mention, either verbally or silently, your own prayers for our Lord. Lord, I pray that uh, everything be soon returned to normal at the home of Pastor David and Rhonda Eppelsheimers. Um, we ask that they can soon be returned to their home. And like I first said, it will soon be returned back to normal again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that the oppression in the world, be it military or governance or social, um, take a step back and uh, look at what cooperating and community can offer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, trusting your word and praying for obedient hearts and lives, we ask these and all things in the power of your name, our risen Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Violet. Uh, I invite you all to stay muted and um, uh, this is our offering time, so um, there will be a link in the chat if you would like to access our giving button online. Um, and uh, in the meantime, uh, the um, worship team will be offering a song, You Are the Seed, I invite you to sing along. This is also a good time to bring your communion elements close by to you as you prepare for the meal.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught. Our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins. Forgive us our sins. Save us from the time of trial. And save us from the time of trial. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of power now and forever. Now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path that we may do justice, love, kindness, and walk humbly with you now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. Christ is alive. Alleluia. Because he lives, we too can live. Alleluia. Go, therefore, and tell the others. Go, therefore, and let your life reflect God's love, Christ's call, and the Spirit's power. Go, therefore, and know that Christ is with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Now I invite you to stay muted and sing along with our sending song, Go. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God.